EFF and Operation Dudula have been exchanging words the past few days, mainly on the issue of immigration. Operation Dudula has been calling on government to prioritize South Africans and create policies that will allow South Africans only to get jobs. The group has also been targeting undocumented foreign nationals, accusing them of crimes and taking jobs meant for South Africans. On the other hand, the EFF has been calling for a, borderless, a borderless African continent. So how can this issue of illegal immigrants really addre be addressed without clashes and possible xenophobic attacks? To talk more about this, I'm joined by Professor Setulejo Matebesi, Head of Department and Associate Professor for Sociology at the University of of the Free State. Thank you very much for your time and for joining us this evening, Professor. Can you tell us what you make or of the recent standoff between the EFF and Operation Dudula? Hi, good evening, Enli, and good evening, South Africans. Uh, what has been happening uh, over the past couple of days is indicative of a problem where, in the absence of the state, a civic organization have occupied or used alternative means to send a message to say that we cannot tolerate crime to continue in our neighborhood and it is incumbent upon us as the residents of that particular area uh, to take a stance on this but where i would draw a line is when a, any organization or any individual takes the law in its own hands. What Operation Dubula stands for, it's not against any law in South Africa because we, we have a huge problem of crime and we can't also just blame foreigners for that. But the fact of the matter is we've seen some of these brazen uh, criminal acts that have been conducted in South Africa recently has been done by some of these criminal elements. And especially where there is evidence that at a certain household, uh, criminal activities are taking place and the residents convey that message over uh, to the police and nothing happens. But fact of the matter, coming back very briefly to your question about the two organizations, that is very sad because at the end of the day, it seems as if we are we have taken three steps forward in terms of consolidating our democracy, but yet we are on the brink of yet black on black violence in South Africa. It, this uh, contestation between or misunderstanding between Operation Dubula and uh, the uh, EFF is not muted as soon as possible. Mm. This conflict seems to be converging around the issue of Ntlantla Lux Lamini's arrest. Uh, the details of, of that uh, supposed crime are still to emerge. However, EFF members accusing him of vandalizing and assaulting uh, the home of a um, Soweto resident, Victor Ramerafi, who was also a, a former EFF secretary, a branch secretary. Um, Tell us a little bit more about the ideological opposition between these two groups. Professor, are you still with us? Yes, yes, yes. I think there was a break in transmission, but I'm still, I'm still with you. I do apologize. Tell us a little bit more about um, the ideological opposition of these two groups, because it seems um, that a large part of the conflict is, is converging around the arrest of Ntlantla Lux. Is this possibly an opportunistic, um, you know, sort of action by the EFF to take out the leader of Operation Dudula, or is there more at the heart of this? Yeah, well, it's going to be very difficult to respond to uh, to that question because, I mean, the EFF, like any orga other organization, has a responsibility to speak on behalf of an act uh, in the interest of its own members. So if an EFF, mem EFF member has been wronged and they seem to see it fit to intervene, that is their own democratic right. But I, I think where the EFF should have made it clear to say we do support 
what operation, what is operation stands for, uh, you know, against illegal, and that's that's the crux of the matter, illegal I immigrants, undocumented I uh, immigrants in South Africa. That I don't think any country will allow. And if you look at South Africans, actually, in, in, in large, in general, are imprisoned in their own home because of the whole issue of crime. And the government has been preaching that the government alone cannot solve this problem. But coming back to the EFF, I strongly believe that in the same jest as the EFS wanted to protect its member, they should have stated that, look, we've got a different view on immigration. We want the borderless Africa. But fact of the matter is we are also not going to condone uh, criminality or criminal acts or uh, immigrants who are even illegal immigrants for that matter. Uh, legal immigrants who are in South Africa for that matter who are involved in criminal acts. Mm -hmm. I think that would have conveyed a very powerful message. And that is missing and that's why Professor, I, I do apologize. I'm going to jump in that. there. Um, and, and I want to address something very specific that seems to be an, an ongoing dialogue that is sparking now, is this conflation of the idea of illegal immigrants and criminality. And we do understand there are criminal elements within any population, whether they are legal to a country or whether they are immigrants or whether they are illegal immigrants. But these conversations around uh, criminality and illegal immigrants seems to suggest that all illegal immigrants are involved in some level of criminality. And there seems to be a danger there that that could lead to further conflict and even acts of xenophobia. Yeah, most definitely. I agree with you. Look, we, we cannot be naive, uh, but uh, we can also not deny uh, how brazen some criminal elements. And I mean, we've just a couple of months or last month have seen how some foreign uh, nationals uh, have, you know, been involved in some of the most brazen c c criminal elements. But one should be very careful to try and now in uh, you know try to say every single uh, immigrant is involved in an act of criminality that i do agree but look we are not living in the area where most uh, this operation is taking place and one would have to ask and i can only speak as a sociologist to say when a civic organization comes up and and, and for the very first question we we need to ask ourselves the question why in the first place do we have an operation like that that for me simply tells tells you that uh, the spaces of participatory governance, the formal structures of uh, community engagement are failing. And that's why you will have a mushrooming of operations like that, of civic organizations like that, who see and deem it fit to occupy that space to try and deal with that challenge. And that's why I say I do not condone how this operation is going about knocking on the doors of individuals and all that. They can do their operation. They can campaign, they can take the, the case to, to the, the government at whatever levels. But the moment when they themselves also become in, 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 in involved in criminal activity, I think it actually creates a, a serious problem. But yes, uh, actually one should be very cautious not to try and paint every uh, immigrant uh, as, or label them as criminals. Yeah. Thank you very much uh, for your insights. That was Professor Setolejo Matabesi, Head of the Department and Associate Professor for Sociology at the University of the Free State.